Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, that's my big pleasure to be here. <laughs> As I'm working with Fabij Fellows for several years already, <laughs> uh, four or five years already. Uh, here, I'm just uh, presenting how the things are going on in China. But uh, I try to give you a general picture to see how the policy evolving from the early time to now, to now. big changes, very high dynamics. But actually, I will follow in the, the, the pattern, just addressing the four key questions here. Yes, first, we see the key drivers. <coughs> key drivers of the industrial innovation policy. Uh, chasing back to the time, uh, thanks to Mr. Deng Xiaoping, and uh, opened the door and uh, started the market economy-oriented reform. So we see things changed since then. But uh, actually, at the very beginning, Mr. Deng already addressing the power of the science and technology. Uh, should it be a primary uh, productive Force. So all the policies actually since the reform actually following this guidance, yeah, even though they have some changes. Yeah, so we see in China, especially the five-year uh, plan is very important. But uh, in the last uh, uh, 40 years, we see that China is heading from the catch-up to go even beyond. So we see the policies uh, crafting, especially in this new century, we see that uh, the key events, National Science Technology Conference, or we say the assembly, is very important. Formerly, that's about uh, 20 years at once, the National Assembly. But after uh, we get into the new century, about uh, 10 years, 10 years, we have the National Assembly for the science technology. Uh, and also, it's uh, incorporated uh, with the five-year plan for the assembling. Most, mostly, we are uh, addressing our future. Uh, at the most, uh, we see the 20 years or 30 years plan. So that's the long-term plan for it. But uh, every five years, we have the five-year um, plan to guiding to how to implement uh, those uh, targets. So actually, the, the drivers in China, uh, the, driver force, uh, uh, the driver forces was mainly in, at the top. But uh, during the top, when the crafting the five-year plan, asking, advising uh, very widely. So especially to my knowledge, in the last uh, uh, five years plan, uh, more than 10,000 experts join the discussion, join the crafting of the new plan. So that's the whole systems in China. And uh, the second part, we see the objectives of the industrial innovation policy. Basically, I see, we should see that we have the long-term foresight oriented. So the long-term objectives, so with this, we could see at first, we have the very ambitious target to say we should join the world's innovators, the leading innovators. So that's the, uh, we have some targets based on the stages. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so we see that, so that's the target set, set up for the 2020. But then now we have see, to see, that's a move ahead, 2030. And then even we see the 2050. So the long-term foresight oriented, that's the basic uh, sense in China. So that's, we see that's uh, big advantages to make the um, policy implemented uh, with the alignment with the national uh, target. And uh, another thing is very important, that's the systemic thinking. We see the technologies, industries, not just in this. We see this as a systematic uh, ecosystems. So military, especially targeting for the innovation-driven uh, development, 
uh, that's the main target of the mission. But in this, we see especially we have the two main drivers here. The first, we see the technology innovation and the industrial uh, innovations. But uh, another, another driver is implementing this target. We are forming our new national innovation systems. So we see that we have the development target, but also at the same time, we're conducting the reforms, reform the whole system, make the whole system more efficient, more effective. So that's the case. And in the detail also, we can see the going down. So we see the six transitions, the transitions in six aspects. Uh, during the transitions, actually, they especially the reform needed. Uh, but uh, the reform, since the, especially in, since we get into the new century, we see that the more and the more we see, more and more clear, we see, to let the market economy system works, but uh, under the long-term planning. So that's the basic uh, logic for the development, uh, for the objectives in China, the crafts. But first go further on, we see that how to develop, to develop for the policies. So we have our system works. So at the national level, we see the central committee, and then we see the state council. We see the so many uh, ministries uh, involved in this. And uh, we see that especially we have the, uh, for the science technology, or we see the industrial targets, we have the mapping systems. Uh, we have so many uh, experts involved in the mapping or the feature. So what's the milestones? We should identify those milestones then to see that the task will be assigned to the different uh, layers. We see the national, provincial, and the uh, uh, cities. We could see this. So this is a layer of the systems, but uh, that's the top down. But anyway, we could see something, not just the bot uh, top down, the bottom up. So especially for the new industry, new emerging industries, and such as the new energy, uh, the EV cars, so, so many things. Actually, mostly there are a lot of the bottom up things. So we see the entrepreneurs based on the market competitiveness how they combine the, with the government policies uh, to conduct it. So that's the basic sense going on. So we see, uh, of course, the uh, National Congress, National Congress play the key uh, role uh, in the development of the policies. Uh, so every uh, four or five years, we could see that the National uh, Congress the main task to addressing addressing the principles for the general uh, uh, how to say the policies yeah the policies you can see that so that's the system and uh, also uh, take one example to see that following the 14th five year plan so we have such a systematic works thank you yeah so to see that uh, the a lot of aspects related that's forming the so-called the ecosystem, not just the, uh, isolating the technology or science or the, uh, or the industries. So that's an ecosystem. And uh, we could see that the dynamics. During the 15 years, uh, 15, uh, five years plan uh, ex ex uh, implementing, uh, the policies have a lot of uh, changes uh, and the coordinates. So we see the strong uh, dynamics here. So that's just a case. And uh, for the industrial policy making processes, we could see general uh, map here. So we see the different institutions are involved in the systems. So that's the development process. And also we see the dynamics, we see that from the 12th, 13th, 14th, five year, each five year plan maybe they have something uh, changed radically. So some new elements will be involved in the plan. 
And also we see not just at the national level, we see the, the locally, we could see China such a big country, the local advantages to be uh, are also being uh, considered. So we could see that the different areas might be some different orientations uh, for the development. And the final issue is about the, the trends, the trends and the application of Chinese uh, industrial innovation policy. That's my personal view. I address this in a sixth point. The first point, I should say, the decoupling. Uh, frankly speaking, the decoupling is going on uh, more and more seriously. How China facing these challenges? So actually, we could say that the decoupling actually enforced the bottleneck breakthrough. We call it the bottleneck breakthrough. Uh, that's identified uh, identify the, 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 what's the bottlenecks. That's just the, an example among this uh, uh, 35 uh, bottlenecks. So already we could see most of those bottlenecks being uh, breakthrough. Yeah, so that's the things going on in China. And uh, also we could see the decoupling accelerating the high-end uh, import substitution, we could see that, such as the uh, high-tech uh, companies like this, especially we see the semiconductors. Actually, the import uh, uh, substitution actually enhanced by 20% just in within two, three years. So we could say that the decoupling is not good for the world, but actually for China, actually, we are forced to do a lot of things to, to, to concentrate more resources to go through, to break through the bottlenecks. And also there are a lot of indicates we could see that. So the import export of semiconductor devices, so we could see uh, this. Yeah, so export increasing and the import decreasing. And also we could see the semiconductor, the whole, uh, the chips, uh, uh, the chips we see the, uh, how to say, the self supply uh, and, and increasing very quickly. So in last year, we could see uh, there are 20% reducing of the import of the chips. That's not a bad, actually. So we could see the increasing of the domestic providers are rising, rising so quick. And also we could see another very important issue, that's the carbon uh, emission. Uh, our nationally, we have the, the ta target, 2030, 2050, thank you. So for this, actually, the policy that's very strongly enforced to the different areas. So most of those provinces, they have the task force and the tasks identified how to reduce their carbon emissions. That's forced a lot of innovations to improving their, the greening of our uh, uh, industry development. And uh, also we could see another typical case is the new energy vehicles. So we could see China, the new energy uh, vehicles, the EV actually uh, developed so fast. But uh, if we look further, we could see the dynamics of the policies to guiding the development. Uh, I have no time to address it in detail, but uh, let's show you the dynamics. So we could see the New EV sales, we could see the growth late uh, like this. But the last one, just the half year, the half year is increasing in this year. Yeah, that's increasing very, very fast. And uh, also we see our exports. The last period, that's the half year, only half year. So almost the, the same with the last the whole year, last year. So that's the increasing of the new vehicles. Uh, Okay, the, the third trend is about that they, we are heading towards the upstream, the upstream of the innovation and the industries. So we see the national laboratory and all national innovation centers established and reinforced in recent years very quickly. So look at this, so called the national manufacturing uh, innovation centers. Uh, that's the number of it. That's, that's focusing on some key issues. So we could see that. Okay, so we see the, the results, we could see that we are progressing even faster 
So when the decoupling going on, and uh, we see that uh, the progressing in science technology and uh, industrial development uh, even uh, faster. So that's the fact. So we could say that the invention pattern. So we are heading to cultivating the very creative uh, parents. So for universities, we could see the STEM uh, parents. That's the university students. Every year, that's increasing the number. So every year now, we have the graduation of the new students, university students, about uh, uh, 10 million a year. So we see, see the new forces getting to the market, and also especially for the students for science, technology, engineering, mathematics, a big amount of those things. So those people are actually uh, accelerating the progressing. The fifth trend is that the well connecting of so-called innovation chain and the industrial chain. So we see the, the chains. So especially for the innovation chains, formerly it's separated. You see the CAS, China Academy of Science, not so much related with the industry, but in recent years, they asked to deliver, to transfer the technology and take the demands from the industries. That's also developed uh, very quickly. So we could see that they are well connecting of the innovation chain with the industrial chain. So we see the manufacturing value add, especially we see the high tech ratio increasing. So that's the things going on. Finally, I sh uh, the last point I should mention is that financing. So financing the science technology and the upstream of the industrial development. That's the reason uh, going on very quickly. So such as uh, accelerating the IPO of the uh, technology intensive companies. That's uh, accelerated. So that's the case. So R&D expenditures also, of course, is increasing uh, very quickly. So that's the things going on. So finally, uh, compared to the <laughs> Uh, the seven, uh, uh, the eight, the eight principles developed by the Babbage Forum, my co our college colleagues, we could say compare this, what's the China doing for, accordingly to those uh, principles. I just uh, show here. I'm not uh, like to, to addressing one by one. So anyway, the time is already. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.